Right, hello again. Um, another pair of speakers, and this time um, I I was just scouring around eBay like you do, and I came across these. And these are a National Panasonic pair of two-way speakers. Uh, the model is the SB61, and these mean a lot to me. These um, I only picked these up for twenty quid, and yeah, like I say, these mean a lot to me. Um, when I was really, really young, um, I used to go round um, a friend's house, uh, Gareth and Carlinga, and they had an enormous lounge. I mean, God, it must have been, obviously I was a bit smaller then, so a bit difficult to gauge, but um, it must have been seven metres by six, maybe a bit bigger. And um, <clears throat> their dad, Ian, had a National Panasonic Music Centre. So you had a cassette deck, you had a, a record deck I think it was a Gerard record deck on those um, and a tuner and it was quite a nice piece of kit actually back when music centers were like a piece of furniture um, I think it was reasonably powerful 50 watts a channel something like that don't know um, but it came with these it came with these speakers and they had them wall mounted um, either side of the fireplace like I say in an enormous lounge and we used to play all our records and beat the crap out of this poor little music center and these little things were great and I, I whether it's just nostalgia and you know you think back and how good things were they say never meet your heroes if I was to plug these in I'd probably think they're crap um, but it was probably my first um, look into hi-fi and music and that sort of thing and I was probably eight or nine something like that but we used to love these absolutely love them <clears throat> and then later as I got more and more into this um, I managed to myself pick up one of these hi-fis or music centers National Panasonic um, if I can find a picture of it I will stick it in now um, yeah, eventually I found one of these at a car boot sale and it came with these speakers and set them up in my bedroom and I absolutely loved it. And I got more and more into hi-fi stuff and mucking around with kit, but these speakers always stayed with me. Um, and then I think when I started working and earning a bit of money, I got the CPC catalogue. Um, some of you may know that and they used to sell quite a big range of drivers i think there were a lot of the stat and stuff um, they also sold a lot of audax um, and probably vifa things like that i don't know but <clears throat> i bought two and they were pretty expensive at the time six and a half inch audax polypropylene woofers and also two audax tweeters in fact they're the same tweeters that i've used in my 44s recently and I, not knowing a huge amount about crossovers and things at the time, bought something generic. And I put them in these. And it was something else. It was, I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. Um, eventually the music centre died and I tried repairing it and <clears throat> mucking around with it. And there was this horrible ground hum there. Um, these days it would probably be quite an easy fix for me. But um, then I ended up with a, a Rotel power amp integrated amp sorry and these speakers stuck with me and they were just brilliant and i kept hold of them we moved it when i met my partner and we bought our first house these speakers came with me um, when we moved again these speakers came with me and they were always really really good i loved them had loads of different amplifiers powering them and they were always great and then about five years ago we moved here to devon and i really wanted to set these up in our lounge but um that just didn't happen we went for something different and by then i'd obviously got into um the speaker work i do now and mucking around with these but i didn't really touch them because i liked the way they sounded um, they could handle quite a bit of power as well and they ended up in our um, second lounge our snug just on a shelf in there um, each side of our fireplace funnily enough and they were great but eventually 
I stripped them down and I built some different cabinets to go in the lounge and put the drivers in them. Slightly altered things a little bit um, and that worked out really well but eventually they still didn't look particularly tidy um, so eventually I did the stupid thing of selling them um, and I regret that, I really do. Mainly because of the Audax drivers that were in them. That woofer um, was a, an amazing piece of kit um, and I'm sure I've possibly got some pictures of it. I don't know if I have then they'll be in this video but I don't think I have. So I found these cabinets for 20 quid and £3.50 to have them delivered. I don't know how that was possible. Um, and they're a good size. They're only about eight inches wide. In fact, we'll measure them. Hang on. So they are 22 centimetres wide, 44 high, and... 26 deep and they're a good size they're perfect for a stand mount speaker um, so my idea with these is they're, they're a chipboard cabinet and they're you know I could build a cabinet like this but um, the grill covers are quite nice with these rounded edges on them so I can recloth these they're not removable unless you unscrew from the rear so I would make these um, probably recess some magnets in there so we could remove them um, they already have a vinyl wrap on them, so it's like um, a sort of oak effect, similar to what I've been doing with some of the other speakers I've been working on. And I thought we could make a decent two-way out of these, because that's what they are. They're not big enough to warrant doing something three-way. But I've got a few ideas. I either find a good six and a half inch midwoofer and a good tweeter, or I install two say five and a quarter inch woofers with a tweeter in the middle so a diapolito arrangement um, and see what we can do with these and then we will stick them in front of the microphone um, design a crossover for them so we can get you know a good frequency response good off-axis response um, and then turn them into something and it'll be interesting to see how much time I spend doing this how much those drivers cost me uh, and com crossover components and tot it all up because I was having a conversation with someone um, recently about the cost of speakers and how I to me I think it's crazy I do not understand how speakers sell for the money they do I, I know there's the material value or material factor into building these speakers and then the labor in building them um, and obviously the time and money in designing them has to be dissolved into the final sale price but some of them are ridiculous a, a two-way speaker with a five and a quarter inch woofer going for three grand that sort of thing it's just it's mad um, and probably one of the reasons why I started doing this donkeys years ago because of the cost of these things and also you know you buy these speakers for two or three grand and you take the back off them and look at the components inside them and they're dog shit, they really are. Um, I was helping someone with some Harbour speakers recently, um, which were like four grand's worth of speaker for a two-way or something. And the parts quality, awful. Bottom of the barrel. I've probably got better things lying around on the workshop floor. But anyway, I'm ranting a bit now, but I just want to see, so I've got obviously got the boxes, but I could build those. That's probably 50 quid's worth of timber. Um, but let's start with what we've got and see what it costs us to do and the time it takes me and to see what results we could get. And then I'm gonna send these off to a couple of people who I really respect in terms of speaker review. Um, one of those is gonna be Kevin from the Ditton Works because he regularly has some really good speakers in. Um, if anyone's gonna be able to do a good comparison with these against some of the more mainstream um, higher end products then it's going to be him um, and then I think I'm going to ask him to send them off to um, a couple of other people I've got in mind which would be interesting I, I just want to see what can be done and then maybe look at um, either building these or um, a kit form so more and more people can get into 
good quality hi-fi um, without spending stupid amounts of money and getting something that's been designed and built um, to a really good level and then it's cost engineered back um, and you end up spending a bucket load of money on something that is probably true value 50% of what you pay for it. But anyway, so we'll take a quick look at these and this will be part one. And then part two, we'll select some drivers to go in here. Obviously, we've got to take into account the size of enclosure we've got, so back work things. I'm going to keep these um, as a, an acoustic sealed box. I'm not going to port them or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, that's what we'll work with. <coughs> right. So I've taken the back off this one already. I'll bring you in a bit closer. So hopefully you can see that reasonably well. And back in the day, I thought these sounded really good. And all, all we've got is a six inch, six and a half inch woofer, sorry, directly connected. No filter on this, no um, low pass filter or anything like that. Just straight on there, soldered connections. Uh, paper cone, um, yeah, not a very big magnet, it's four ohm rated. And then we come into our tweeter. The tweeter's connected out of phase. And we just go through a simple 4.7 microfarad electrolytic bipolar cap um, and that's it so really that's just a first order slope on the tweeter um, probably protecting it more than actually you know any form of um, integration between the two connected out of phase the woofer just plays um, full range and we got this um, material sound deadening in here and there's also some of it stapled on the rear so a good sort of chipboard box actually not bad we'll brace this up a bit more but um, yeah I thought this might be um, fairly interesting um, I think we'll work with what we've got in terms of the cutouts um, like I say make the cover removable um, and see what we can do because like I say they're a good size um, but we can't salvage this, it's all scratched up and chipped around the edge, so you know, we'll do something with that. But uh, yeah, might be interesting. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, more coming up, and uh, yeah, let's see what we can do.